Hi everybody and welcome to 442. I've got Sheikh Rampelli and Oliver Kihoyan with me and we wanted to chat today about the first four games and what we can take out of that, um, you know, without reading too much into it. Um, who's performed well, why are there so many goals going in, um, why are there so many unexpected, ridiculous mm. results. Um, you know, you've got Leicester beating Man City 5-2, you've got you know, Man United getting hammered by Tottenham 6-1. You've got uh, Liverpool getting hammered by Aston Villa 7-2. And on average, you're seeing, I think, about a goal more per game, which yeah. is 25% increase in, in or 33% increase in, in, in goals up from last year. Yeah, and I, mean, I know we've got goal a, in soccer is... Look, and I know we've got a small sample size of four games, but is it going to be a trend that continues? Will it level out? Is there any rational explanation for what we're seeing? Let's start with you, Shakes. Um, all the way from Joburg. Why don't you tell us what you think? And what what surprised? What, what's been the most surprising thing for you about the uh, the Premier League this year? Yeah, look, I mean, I think obviously um, the amount of goals. Obviously, there's a lot of goals that is being scored. But I also think it it has to do with the fact that it's been such a unique situation where teams have been off for like three to four months. And eventually they had to start playing again. And then they had a very short preseason. They didn't have a, a preseason of like six weeks or eight or seven weeks or whatever. They had a very short preseason and immediately they had to start playing competitive games. And before you know it, it's the it's the Saturday you're playing the league. It's the Wednesday you're playing Carabao Cup. It's a Saturday you're playing this and it's the Carabao Cup again on Tuesday or whatever the case may be. And these games are coming thick and fast qualifiers are happening and uh, and because of that I think players are still not sharp as yet you know they're not sharp as yet and it's still they're still probably getting into the groove of things I know it's been three three games for some and four games for some but I just think it's the uniqueness of this situation where we're seeing so many goals I think the handball rule is also like a it's yes that's that's caused a lot of penalties already and like Oliver said that at the rate that it's going it could be over 80 penalties get dished out of a handball in the whole season so those changes as well um, but yeah it's a crazy time for the neutrals it's great to watch because there's so many goals for people mm -hmm. who actually just like are very intricate and analyze it properly and stuff there hasn't been such great play and bad defenses and handball rules and you can just see this they're short of fitness some players it's an interesting point you're making shakes about a neutral because i think if you're someone that a supports a team b is betting or trying to sort of predict what's going to happen in the premier league it has been a bit of a frustrating season because you've got the big teams and the small teams dropping and winning games that you don't expect so from a supporters point of view if you're a Liverpool supporter it's disheartening it's disgusting to watch them go down 7-2 you know if you're a Man U supporter I Chelsea... thought it, I thought it was pretty funny <laughs> yeah fair enough I think Klopp did too on that one of those goals but um it's an interesting point that you're making if you're a neutral on surface level lots of goals looks great if you're invested in the type of soccer that's being played I think and if you're invested in a team and you're invested in trying to make decent predictions and seeing how the season's going to pan out the rate of penalties, the rate of goals, and the nature of these penalty and goals is a bit frustrating because there's no, you always chat about form guides and about how, you know, sports betting is educated, sports predicting is educated. There, there, there is a, you know, there are trends and there, there's certain things that happen and there really hasn't been. And, you know, the, the first indicator of that was when the Bundesliga returned, June 12th or 13th, I think, or, or just before that. And you just had the most, like the weirdest results, home home games not not meaning much. On average, one more goal as well for the start of the Bundesliga. Um, so there's nothing to really base anything off, and I think it can get a bit frustrating. Hmm. Yeah, look, I, I think that I, I think there's less intimidation for the players when they come mm. to a stadium, especially from a visiting point of view. You've got you've got a, I think I think the Premier League is attracting a better form of coach. So you've got you've got coaches coming in now and they're pressing. Which yeah. is causing mistakes, um, and you, you've got guys, the, the players that aren't that aren't intimidated and, and and are running off their feet. I don't know how long it, they can keep it up for because you know a lot of these teams are taking this press. Uh, the, the Leeds United being one of them, they press all the time. Yeah. What the, and we ch chatted on another show. What's the, what are they going to be like by January? Mm. They could be punch drunk, especially you know? when you've got so much soccer happening at the moment. 
you know yeah. it's not just the premier league that they got to be worried about these they don't have the, the squads to be completely rotating sides there's guys playing you know saturday and then tuesday mm. sunday and then wednesday yeah i know it's 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 insane the amount of soccer that these these guys are playing and um yeah, maybe just the, you know with, the, with with that lack of pressure from 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 playing from these big crowds that uh, mm-hmm. the guys are finishing well, you know they uh, just playing a lot better soccer in themselves. Do you think that that could go both ways though? For the if you're looking at the high penalty count too, do you think this carelessness to which guys, or well, maybe not carelessness but carefree? I think the, I think the, I think the referees aren't intimidated anymore to call things the way they see them. Because okay. they don't have those crowds that are baying for their blood and, yeah. you know, it's like you can't underestimate the pressure that those guys are under. Mm-hmm. Now they show up to an empty stadium. It's like refereeing a, you know, a, a Sunday, Sunday afternoon game in, the, uh, in a wreck yeah. where there's no pressure for them, you know. It's, mm-hmm. um, they just call what they see. And um, if, there's, if they've made any mistakes, it'll, if they, you've got the AR to, to help out. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, there's a lot, a lot of, we could go into many explanations for, for for the way it's going, but um, yeah, it's it's been an unusual, mm-hmm. it's been a surprising start to the year. I don't, I don't think it can, it, they can maintain it. I think mm-hmm. that uh, at some stage with the amount of games and all the football that they're going to be playing and the damp pitches and everything else, we'll get back to some form of normality in the Premier League, but um, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's enjoyed while we can, you know. Yeah, it's enjoyable. Can, enjoy it while it can, while it can last at the moment, but I think that that point you mentioned about the fans is very crucial. Actually, I think when you when you were speaking, I was thinking to myself that I think players are more focused on the game now and not someone telling them something in the crowd or saying yeah. this. So I have to worry about that, and also um, just the fact that also teams are not intimidated anymore. You know, Crystal Palace can go and beat. Uh, Manchester United and and Tottenham can go and beat United the way they did Aston Villa as well scoring seven against uh, against Liverpool I think that's Jurgen Klopp's worst defeat if I remember very well or his third worst but uh, you just would have never thought if you had to pick a team that was going to score seven against Liverpool you probably would have said Manchester City at best and not Aston Villa so not, not the fact I never would have said it I never would have said it <laughs> I'm just saying no one would have no one would have said yeah. that. So um, there's a lot of factors, but that fan one, I think it's a very huge, huge saying, a huge point. Let's not even ignore the fact that Liverpool still scored two. There were nine goals in that game. You know, so it's yeah. like, if you're getting seven goals put past you, the fact that you've still got time, that was at 75 minutes, I think it was 7-2, you know, so. Yeah, you can't help but wonder if, it, if, if an edict's come down from the Premier League for them to be playing more attacking and attractive football in light of the fact that there's no fans as well. I, I mean, I'm yeah. just speculating, but, um, you know, the Premier League for me has always been about, it's not so much the game of football, but it's been the, the people watching the game of football mm. in the stands, the, oh, the singing and the noise. You know, the, it's got, the fans have had them, have, have a huge impact on the Premier League. No doubt. I also think another point to mention is uh, the relegation. I I can't believe, I think this is the quickest we can ever predict who is definitely going to get relegated. I, I can't believe after four games I'm saying... Besides Man United, who are the other t- two teams, uh, Jake? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 <It's crazy. laughs> I mean, to be fair, they are three points from, from the drop, so... But Fulham, I mean, Fulham have started so poorly and it's just gotten worse after every single game. I know they only lost 1-0 to Wolves, but you're losing games. You're not winning. Yeah, you're not, you're not winning games. And Sheffield United too, I can't believe they haven't won a single game since the start of the Premier League. They haven't even gotten a point. And you're sort of asking yourself... They've only scored one goal, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they've only scored one goal and have they been figured out what's happening there? Burnley, the same thing too. But with Burnley, I just have a feeling that Sean Dykes has been here before and there's a lot of injuries that he has to contempt with. So I think they'll definitely find their way. But as for Sheffield and Fulham, I have serious worry for them at the bottom. Yeah, and you can throw West Bromwich Albion into the mix there as well, I think. Eh? Yeah, um, you can definitely throw them into it. They've considered more goals than Burnley as well. So I probably would say uh, West Brom too. And uh, then there's number 16th. And you said number 16th is? 
Man United. Manchester United. There we go. Look, you guys, you guys laugh, but I mean, remember when Leeds got relegated 12 years ago? Was it 12 years ago? Was it long? Like 16 years 16 ago. Years ago. Um, when they were relegated 16 years ago, they had quite, quite a lot of quality on that team. <laughs> they had a team that couldn't be relegated. You know, the Mark Viduka, Harry Kuehl, uh, Lee Boyer, um, Hart, um, Ferdinand. I mean, they had a, they had a star-studded ta yeah. team. So never say never. True. I mean, look, never say never. It could, it could potentially happen, but I know Manchester United, if it ever gets to that place, um, they will do whatever it takes to get there. If they have to get Central in January, they'll get him. If they have to ask Ole to go take a break, they'll probably have to do that too. If they have to get Poch, they'll give him whatever he wants. But they are, I think they'll do whatever it takes to make sure they don't get relegated. Well, I'm just dreaming, you know. Dare to yeah. dream. And yeah, uh, what uh, what surprised you guys? Who, who who has surprised you this so far this year? Um, sure. I think I think we had we had a gut feel about a lot of things that may have come as surprises. You know, we all said at the beginning that Everton would be contenders, um, and they've certainly proven so thus far. I put a bet on them to finish in the top four. Yeah, which is exactly. Look, which is, so, I think it's their performances or something a lot of people may have been surprised by. People saying James Rodriguez past his best won't add that much. I mean, he's added a huge dynamic there. Past his best? How old is he? He's uh, 28, I think. 28 years old, I think. Yeah, but I mean, we've got, you've got people making these comments, like yeah. going to, oh, he's going to Everton now, uh, this and this. So I thought, I think a few people may have seen Everton's performances as a surprise. We called that. Uh, Leeds, happily surprised because when they came up, I was like, got the sense that they could actually end up just doing quite well. Mm. And again, it may come as a surprise if they do. And they have. They've just been up there the whole time. They've been really enjoyable to watch. And I think whether they're going to be going out there, losing, winning or drawing, they're going to be playing great football. Mm. Another, another team that you can say that for, for me, is Arsenal Shakes. I've really enjoyed watching them play. And I'm, and I'm surprised with how much I've been enjoying Arsenal because all they did was frustrate me last season. That was mainly because I was betting on them, which just I've decided to try and stay away mm. from because they seem to have this habit of dropping against smaller teams and then blowing your big teams out the park. But I've got to give them credit for just playing great footy. I'm surprised with the fact that they've stuck to that too, you know? Yeah. Um, like we spoke about in that Liverpool game, not really changing. I know they lost, but they, they were enjoyable to watch. They didn't change their approach from the back. They're trying things. Um, yeah, and I guess I'm just surprised as we all are with the sheer number of goals. Yeah. You know, you've got plus plus six goals across three matches every weekend now. Mm, yeah, it's. I think there's been um, they're averaging about three point eight get goals a game, which is just incredible. Mm. Um, Shakes for you, what who's who what has been besides the obvious the goals? What's been surprising for you, or who's been surprising for you? Well, um, this one has been surprising. Well, this team has been surprising for me, and it's not necessary for good reasons it's actually not for great reasons actually it's manchester city uh manchester city before the season started i thought to myself that's the that's the premier league winners i thought maybe liverpool might be on a honeymoon phase and and they would just at least try finish second this season whereas with manchester city the way that they've started they've already considered so many goals um they weren't very convincing against leeds and with all due respect to leeds what city put on the pitch out there they should have won the game. And they were not able to win the game. And it's if someone wants to ask me right now who drops more points between City and Liverpool, I think it's going to be Manchester City that drops more points. And I've just been so disappointed with how they've been playing. They don't look like they want it bad enough. And I think too much is being said about Aguero and Jesus. Yes, they are, they are important players. But at the same point, it's... Uh, with the quality they have on the pitch already, Riyad Mahrez and Sterling yeah. and Bernardo Silva and this, you should be winning games. And they've just been surprising for me. Another surprise I will say is uh, Sheffield United. I always expected them not to do as well as they did last season, but um, badly. I didn't think it was going to be this bad. You know, I didn't yeah. think it was going to be this bad. And they've not been able to win a game. And it's strange... If you had asked me if they were going to get relegated, I would have said not relegation, but maybe 13th, right? But yeah. maybe it's still early to tell, but four games in, zero loss. I mean, zero wins, zero draws, and all losses, they are in it's serious like, trouble. No. So for me, Manchester City and Sheffield United, 
they've really surprised me. Yeah. Yeah. It, for me, for me, the the the, the surprise. It's how well Everton are playing and how well Jamez is fitting in. How well Kevin Lewin has been playing. Man, on fire would be an understatement. That guy should be wearing an asbestos suit. You know, it's uh, just unbelievable. Um, and Jamez, uh, quality goal that he scored. Did you get two on the weekend, I think? Two, yes. Definitely yeah. got two. Yeah, and he's, he's, geez, he's, been a, he's just been such an, an incredible signing for... For Everton, Angelotti, cool, calm, collected. Um, yeah, so, so, so I've been incredibly surprised by them. I've been pleasantly surprised by Leeds United. Mm. Um, Bielsa, it's hard not to love that guy, even though I can't understand a word he says. <laughs> it's, he's just got such a charisma and a, and a, and a charm about him, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's part and parcel, I was saying in another show, is, is the, the, the coaching talent that's coming into the Premier League. You know, it's uh, it's exciting I, to. S- I have to say, Everton has done really well as well. I'll give them that. I think for me with Everton, it's uh, I just want to see them get tested first. And I think the next game, I've been waiting for it for a while. Like I said in the previous video that we once recorded, it's Liverpool next, and I want to see how they do against Liverpool. And then I will gauge in terms of this is the Ever- this is the new Everton or not. So far, so good, and they've got. Dominic Clavelu in scoring goals. Hummers has adapted really well, but I love how even Ancelotti is using him because he puts the core in as well as Allen or he puts players behind him that work hard that he doesn't have to work hard. Mm-hmm. All he does is create or score goals. And that's all you have to do. You know, so I love how he's being utilized and how he's adapted to the Premier League as well. Yeah, no, it's I agree. Uh, you've got Liverpool now in terms of uh, winning the Premier League at 2.25. So they've drifted, geez, they've drifted about 25% on the weekend's performance. Um, and in third, third place, Chelsea, it's sneaky, 14. But I mean, with the squad that they brought in, I'm just wondering, is there any value in that? Tickle. Just, just for a little tickle? <laughs> nope. Mm-mm. 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 You're saying this, they're 14 to 1 for a reason, hey? Yeah, there we go. And Everton down to 18 to 1. That's interesting, hey? Man United up to 47 to 1. That's just, it's just a, it's an amazing <laughs> one. United. It's amazing oh. what a weekend does in, in soccer, hey? Yeah. Yeah, no, United definitely aren't getting a chance at winning this, that's for sure. Uh, mess with Spurs, wowzers. Um, I, I actually really think. Uh, Manchester City's odds are way too high. They, they were way too. I mean, they no, they should. They're way too low. My bad. I'm saying they're way too low. Two point four five. They should be higher than that because I, I definitely see them losing more games than Liverpool. Well, it'll be interesting because they've they've been without Jesus and, and Aguera for the for, for the start of the season, haven't they? And those two, they they obviously don't have anybody to replace them. Um, and it'll be interesting when they get back. I'm so, I'm, I, look, I'm, I understand that point, Kevin. I'm, but I, I'm, Man City are not going to get away with that one with me. I, I, you've got Raheem Sterling, you've got Mares, you've got Bernardo Silva, you've got Kevin De Bruyne. I mean, you're not going to get away with that one with me. Like it's, it's, you have to beat these teams. You have to play well. I could play up front and I could probably score a tap in. I mean, yeah, but Liverpool were lucky to get away. <laughs> Liverpool were lucky to get away with a result with Leeds. As well, yeah, no, they were. but 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 Liverpool were complacent. I felt in that game rather than I, th- I thought Liverpool were complacent. As for Manchester City, on the other hand, it's they just have to score more. And I mean, he, he's spending what over 400 million on just defenders only. I like, I mean, yeah. Pep, we, he's running out of excuses for me, man. So, who's gonna win? Let's let's who's gonna win the Premier League? You still with Liverpool? Uh, and you know, here's the funny part: the Liverpool easily gonna win the league again. We we might be playing this in six months back. Hey, eh? we've <laughs> always got this. Oh, please, please play it. Please play it. Liverpool's winning this league. Ollie, where are you? There's, <laughs> there's still a class above Liverpool yeah. to win the league. Yeah. But a tickle on Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got Chelsea. I've got Chelsea to win the FA Cup because of their squad size and and yeah. other people's commitments to Europe. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to keep with, with Liverpool. How about the Golden Boot? That's an interesting race, eh? Sure. Potentially Jong-Min Son. 
at the rate at the rate Dominic Clavelun is going, he might actually eclipse it. But yeah, you have to obviously see how he does in the bigger games. I am, um, if I was to back a, a top goal scorer, this is not me being biased. I think Aubameyang will start firing again at some point. Um, I think, I think. Why is he going to the shooting range next week? Uh, <laughs> is he going to the shooting range? <laughs> no, I'm telling you, I, I think because of the fact that Thomas Partey's come in and this will allow uh, Mateta to play back four more often, having more offensive players up front and being allowed uh, players to create for Aubameyang to score. But my second favorite, I'd probably would say it's Jamie Vardy. He takes all the penalties. Um, they play towards his strengths. Um, yeah, Mohamed Salah as well, with, in there with a shout. He's there, he's there somewhere lurking, but I'd probably would say Aubameyang first, Vardy, then Salah, Mohamed Salah. Yeah, I, I, I would, I would, I'd find it hard to bet against Salah because I think Liverpool will fill the net throughout the year. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's great. It's a great little story and subplot with with Everton doing well and and Calvin Lewin doing well, but uh, can they sustain it against um, the bigger teams? And Aubameyang to finish nowhere. <laughs> Our, we're gonna we're gonna play this in six, six months. <laughs> Aubameyang not to finish in the top five with a golden boot. Take that to the bank. Kevin. I know. Uh, Arsenal just aren't that dangerous. Really? I've seen more dangerous Girl Scouts, bud. Okay. Um, let's, we'll play this back in six months' time. <laughs> okay. We'll play back in six months' time. Anyway, guys, thanks for your insight. I really enjoyed the show. And uh, enjoy the couple weeks off and look forward to catching up when we get back to Premier League action again. Definitely. Looking forward to it. Thank you guys for the opportunity to see you guys. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Jake.